We are right now in a battle series, <laughs> doing a battle ready series. And I, I can't tell you <laughs> what we've had to contend with this week and actually the last couple of weeks. It's just been ferocious from the enemy. Right down to our beautiful Tammy here, thinking that she wasn't going to be preaching yesterday because of health issues around COVID. Praise the Lord, it's all okay. But, you know, I had to quickly come up with a message first thing to yesterday morning. Oh my, oh my gosh, I'm not prepared. You know what, God is so faithful. And you're not going to hear from me, you're going to hear from Tammy because she is here. <laughs> but I do want to share a few thoughts because we got locked out last week, didn't we? We didn't get to start our series. And so, um, but you know what was amazing at our um, spiritual warfare, breaking spiritual strongholds seminar, much of what I was going to speak on last week was covered at that seminar. So it's just like, oh, thank you, Lord. You are so faithful. You're so good to us. Um, and so there is going to be some notes um, sent around if you weren't able to make that um that workshop, those will be sent around out for us all to have a read of, and you are so welcome to join with us next for Thursday around that. But I just wanted to give us a few thoughts around why we're doing Battle Ready series right now. And so the Lord spoke to me in December um, about some about some Battle Ready, uh, you know, plans that we need to start to to get our head around. And that's partly because in 2020, um, the church was kind of caught napping, weren't we? As a global church, not this church necessarily, maybe we were, maybe we weren't, but the global church was caught napping and the enemy just came in at our vulnerable place. And this is what the enemy will do. In fact, we'll, we'll look at this next week, but Jesus was in a vulnerable state at that 40 days, 40 nights of prayer and fasting, and that is when the enemy tried to tempt him three times. So it's very, very biblical that the enemy will come in, in our weak spot, in those areas. And so the church, we were caught napping um, last year, and the enemy has come in. And so the Lord has said to me, we need to be battle ready for 2021. And here is some, some battle ready blueprints, if you like. Who knows that our blueprints are already written? We just need to go seeking them. They're already in the word of God. So we don't have to invent these. These are already there. And so some of the things, obvious, most obvious that we're going to look at next week, and all of these um, we'll look at next week, apart from a couple today, is the five, uh, the Ephesians 6 armor of God. Because the Lord said to me, remember that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on your full armor of God, so that when, when, not if, when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand. And so if, not if, actually when evil comes our way, we need to be battle ready yes. with our full armour. And so we're going to look at that next week. There's actually five pieces of the armour. But there's one piece, that a sixth piece, which is a weapon. Yeah, and the yeah. weapon is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And so this sword of the Spirit is where we get our blueprints from, and it's where we, um, you know, we can learn everything that God has got for us moving forward. And so um, there is a seventh piece of the armour that we're going to look at today as well. I actually see this as the lifeblood of a Christian soldier. The lifeblood of a Christian soldier. It threads, if you like, the full armour together and it's called prayer. Mm. And actually in Ephesians 6, it says pray in the spirit on all occasions. And so for those of you who don't know what that looks like, we have heavenly languages that is one of the gifts that God has given his church that actually, um, I, I received this word back in December, that it's the Morse code, I, I heard you um, say it as well, Roger, the other day, and it was confirmation, um, it's the Morse code, if you 
you like, of the battle plan that God has given us. And that's because the enemy can't understand our heavenly languages. These are, these are spiritual words that we utter in the Holy Spirit, um, you know, intercedes on our behalf. And it's between us and God. And so prayer is the lifeblood of a Christian um, soldier. And it's essential, especially the speaking in tongues, our heavenly languages. And we want to invite people up this morning if you haven't received that gift. Our prayer team wants to get behind you and pray for the, the gift, of gift of tongues this morning. Another part of the... The armour, if you like, it's not in Ephesians 6, but some of the things that God is wanting us to look at in terms of, um, in terms of being battle ready, they, they're things like being led by Jesus. We've certainly looked at this. There is a dance that we're invited into, and God is calling us to be led by Jesus. Like we've been saying many times, the glory cloud. We follow the glory cloud. We don't go separate to God's plan. And as we saw this morning, sometimes that's going to look totally different. You know, what would happen if there's no preacher? What would happen if there's no worship leader? We have to get creative in this era, Hebrews uh, 10 says, Hebrews 10, 25, I think it is. And so we're going to get creative um, as part of a battle plan. Our identity We've looked at our identity. We are a child of God. This is so important for us to take hold of as a battle-ready plan. We are worshippers who worship in spirit and truth. We looked at that as well. Worship brings down strongholds. Worship cuts through the enemy. Declaring the name of Jesus is so vital in this era, in this in this time of getting battle ready. Um, other things that we're going to look at is unity in in the bride of Christ. It's so integral that we rise up as one army. You don't, an army is very much um, in, in alignment with one another. They, if they're in a march, they march on time with the beat, but we march to the beat of Jesus. Yes, right. And so therefore we need to arise as one body of Christ. He is the head. We are the body, but we are one in Christ Jesus. And therefore, that is part of our uh, uh, of how we get battle ready, is being uni unified together. There is strength in numbers. What else are we going to look at? We are going to look today at, at the authority and the power that comes through knowing who Jesus is. The power that comes through Jesus is the authority that we actually can stand on. So there are a number of things. The other, the other battle-ready plan with God is to rest. You know, Hebrews 4 says we must rest. God himself rested on the seventh day. He is calling us into rest because it's when we are restful, when we are Mary's rather than Martha's, that we will hear the voice of God. We will be able to read it from his word. We will be able to know the next step of the dance. Good. It's really important for us to understand what we're doing in terms of that already. It, it, Matthew 24 says that the world will get darker in the last days. That is, and it also says that there will be counterfeit spirits in the last days. We need to be ready with our full armour intact in order for us to, to know our authority, to claim our authority, and to stand. And when all is said and done, Ephesians 6 says, stand. And so that is what we're all about at the moment around this Battle Ready series. So this morning we're doing things um, a little bit differently. I'm inviting Carol up first. She's going to share on prayer. She is our prayer leader. And so I wanted to invite Carol to share a little bit on prayer. And then after that, we're going to hear from Tammy, um, and she's going to give us um, one of those threads of the of the battle ready uh, plan that we've got in place. So, Carol, give her a warm welcome. How's it going? I'm picking up the story. <laughs> I'm mean, I need some help. So, can somebody grab their um, um, phone or their Whatever they've got handy, a Bible, one with pages, maybe. Hello, hello. You remember what that is? Oh, I haven't got my notes. Oh, gee, I'm going to have my glasses. I'm going to be in trouble. Ooh. I might have to do this without my notes. Okay, 
Safety. Oh, thank you, Ronnie. She's always coming. Oh, this is not the right color, right? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Come in, come in, come on. I prefer the lighter blue one that she always wears. Yeah, the praying always. That also 
is a weapon. It's a mighty weapon to bring down stone blocks. And part of the pain, there's, there's lots of things in the pain. And I just want to draw out some of these things. And one of them is being watchful. That's good. If you have an army, you have you have spies and recruits that are going around, they're watching their scouts, aren't they? Yeah. There might be other words for them. But they're scouts and they're watching and they're coming back reporting. They're being watchful. Yeah. How would we know what to pray if we weren't watchful? And we weren't aware of what is going on. So watchful and awareness um, really, in a sense, inform our prayerfulness. Are you with me? Yeah. Do you agree? Yes. Perseverance, supplication and boldness are other aspects. So we can persevere in prayer. Let's persevere. We probably do. But we need to keep all the more in these times. And boldness. Let's come boldly. Not to be timid in our prayer. We have everything available to us. We can come boldly. That doesn't mean that, that we act in a... Uh, you know, the word boldness kind of has a little bit, for me, a little bit of an implication because I'm a bit of a kind of a softy. But the boldness, is, it doesn't need to be soft. Boldness is probably a little bit more about having the authority. Mm, that's good. So you can come, and I do, and I'm, I'm a, as I said, I'm a bit of a softy, but I know um, what I know because, you know, I have that authority, I can stand in that. Yeah. So nothing at all about, you know, I'm not strong enough, or I'm, no, if we're not strong in ourselves, we're strong in the Lord. That's good. So, um, Okay, just getting back to the praying always and the being uh, watchful and aware of what we are noticing and sensing. So even if we are praying for someone, for example, so the other might be about us going, our boldness and going to the Lord. But this is another aspect of prayer when we're called, um, carrying our weapons, uh, being equipped, um, when we are ministering to other people, and we touched a little bit about on that on Thursday night, um, this is where we need um, we need we need a lot of sensitivity. Yeah. Really, really do. Yeah. And praying for that um, is imperative. We don't want to bruise anyone. No, being well equipped. We, we in the flesh, um, a warrior or, or a soldier will know how to use his weapons when he's well trained in the use of his weapons. Even how to clean his gun, how to load it, um, how to unload it, how to store it. And this is about knowing how to use your weapons and, and knowing your target too. Yeah. So it's the same in the prayer realm um, when we're sharing with one another. We, have, we carry an authority with us and we, carry, we can carry boldness and at times we need to, remembering that it's not about power, it's about our authority that we can step into places uh, with that authority, but with um, um, that care, always with that care. Mm -hmm. Nearly finished. I had to allow time, brothers. <laughs> Thank you. Here's mine. <laughs> My paper um, notes. Um, just another thought, we don't need to be an expert. Please don't be put off because you think that's not your gift. 
end of verse 10, it says, um, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So sometimes that, that boldness will take us into places where we might feel like we're a little bit out of our depth. But if we carry that sensitivity and that wisdom uh, and the authority that we have, it will be okay, provided we have that atmosphere about us. Um, I want what he has and what he wants to impart. I guess we all do too. I desire, uh, it's, uh, uh, using all these other words, I'm a bit embarrassed about it, but um, I desire his strength, his sensitivity, his timing at all times, but particularly when praying for others, either at the altar, and we have a, a team here that prays, um, in our casual circumstances, um, praying for uh, others here at church, further out of field or our family or whoever, um, or any aspect of our work. There's a few things that I want to emphasize in closing. And particularly if we feel we've got a prophetic word, not only that, but just particular, these are things to keep in mind. And if we keep them in mind, we will be battle ready and we'll be like We'll be, um, we'll be in good condition and those that we minister to will be better off for our meeting. So these are those thoughts. Is the time right for me to share? Is my approach right? Am I doing it for my sake? Be careful, kind, and understanding always that these are children of the most high God and can be very, very vulnerable. We're all vulnerable in some aspect of our lives if we're very honest. Um, just to be aware that we may be stepping into territory that we know nothing about. Better to err on the side of caution. Be ready to step back, be corrected, and come with humility. Mm. Always asking permission. Be bold, but do it softly. Mm. So just as we prepare our armour, which covers our body, so it is with our inside and out, our spiritual, our spiritual world, our, our inner world. These insights protect us. They protect the person that we are praying for. Um, and so, you know, I just want to leave you with those, with those thoughts. But most of all, we desire to be a blessing to the Lord. It's not about us. He will use us. Um, so just, you know, I hope that some of these small offerings <coughs> I've shared today, they've come out of a bit of experience um, and teaching um, and prayer is such a powerful thing and um, we're hearing more and more about it, we've, we've always known about it, but here we are, you know, in preparation for battle, we will be faced with things, well, let's take these aspects and um, just absorb them into our, our whole being. Thank you for listening, everyone. I hope it was helpful. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, I'm 
just coming here today to humbly share some of the thoughts and reflections that um, I've gathered, um, you know, when thinking about the Battle Ready series. Um, I really like this way of doing things where there's a couple of different people that come up and talk. <laughs> it's really nice. It's nice to be able to hear from everyone, you know. It's, we're all family, so yeah, it's really good. Thanks, Carol. I, it's really, really valuable. So, um, battle ready, okay? Yeah, there's lots to it, really, when you think about it. Um, personally, something that God was speaking to me about was that um, is, is our hearts in, in, a, in a battle ready sense. So, um, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, um, a prophetic word was shared with me, and off the back of that word, um, I really felt like God was um, saying, my grace is sufficient for you. Um, and so I started, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's a nice verse. Everybody knows it. Um, 2 Corinthians 12. <laughs> um, I thought, you know, I'd sit down and just do a bit of a, you know, journaling, a bit of writing in my notebook. So um, I just want to read out the NIV version, the Passion Translation version, and the Amplified version. And I know that's a bit of an over, you know, going over the top, but... I think it helps us to really understand a verse, you know, like it picks it apart, you know, and it breaks down the words so that you can kind of understand it in a deeper sense. So in the NIV, it says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 to 10, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardship, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Mm -hmm. Strong in battle. Right? Right. 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 Thanks, Uncle Matty. <laughs> but he answered me, this is the Passion Translation, my grace is always more than enough for you. And my power finds its full expression through your weakness. So I will celebrate my weaknesses, for when I am weak, I sense more deeply the mighty power of Christ living in me. So I am not defeated by my weaknesses, but delighted. For when I feel my weaknesses and endure mistreatment, when I'm surrounded with troubles on every side and face persecution because of my love, for Christ, yeah. <laughs> I am made yet stronger, yeah. for my weakness becomes a portal to God's power. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. Thanks, Passion Translation. And here's the Amplified, right? Amplified, I get a bit lost in. Does anybody else? Like, I'm reading along, yeah, right? I'm like, oh, that's great, that's great. And then you get a bit distracted because your mind starts thinking about all the different bits that it's come. And you're like, oh, now I need to go and read it in another version so I understand what is going on. <laughs> cool. Amplified. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough. So there's a theme, more than enough. Yeah, it's good. Always available. It's always available. Grace is always available to us regardless of the situation. For my power is being perfected and is completed and shows itself most effectively in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly boast in my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may completely enfold me and may dwell in me. So I am well pleased with weakness and insults, with distresses, with persecutions and with difficulties for the sake of Christ, for when I am weak in human strength, then I am strong, and in brackets, truly able, truly powerful, truly drawing from God's strength. Yeah, amen. It's a good verse, you know. <laughs> like, and and I, I'd like to just, so I was, you know, reflecting on this, and I'm like, whoa, that's powerful. And I really sense God saying, what weaknesses are you trying to hide that if you brought it to your loving Father in heaven, would be part of his power being made perfect in you, mm. therefore making you battle ready. Yeah. Yeah. 
The society that we live in doesn't exactly celebrate weaknesses, you know. The society that we live in actually says, you need to hide that. You know, we don't want to know about your weaknesses. We only want to see strength, you know. And so we go through life kind of hiding everything, you know, in us that's negative, that's a weakness. Now I'm not saying to go out to everyone and, you know, expose all the weaknesses. But I'm saying that your loving father calls you into a loving relationship and he accepts all of you and all of the weakness. Yes. So when we deny our weakness rather than boast of it like Paul, I wonder if it can stunt God working in us. Accepting our weaknesses can be challenging and there's a level of vulnerability in accepting a weakness. And nobody likes to be vulnerable. <laughs> Thanks, Carol, you touched on vulnerability before as well. Nobody likes to be vulnerable, you know? And as I said, society doesn't allow vulnerability either, you know, generally. But if we can bring it into this loving relationship with God and, and trust trust him with it, that's when his power is made perfect in us. So essentially, if we can accept it, bring it to God, that's when we're the strongest. So the more that we deny that its existence, the less that we can be strong in the Lord. You know, sometimes people might think, you know, oh, but condemnation, you know, like God, God won't love me if he knows about that weakness, or God won't, you know, but there's a verse to cover that too in the Bible, and it says there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus died. He bore it all on his body on the cross. He died for us. He took our sin. He took our shame. He took our heartbreak. He took all of our failures, he took our sickness, and he bore it on his perfect being so that when it came to bringing our weaknesses to God so that his power could be made perfect in us, it was all done. No condemnation. Only sufficient grace. Enough grace. It says there is enough grace to cover it all. So I really want to challenge you that if there are areas of weakness in your life that you perhaps kind of just tuck away, that as we're thinking about becoming more battle ready and in this time, you know, like Nicole said before, that the enemy, you know, kind of got in the weak spots, you know, in the church body, in the global church body. But if we don't have the weak spots, then it doesn't get in, you know. So if we can bring those to God in that, in that, intimate relationship with our loving Heavenly Father who promises there's now no condemnation, then we can be filled with his power and his strength. It says it in the Bible. I just read it like in three different versions. So to be battle ready, to be strong in the Lord, just really encourage you to bring these things to him. It's not just weakness, it's heartbreak. You know, it's it's persecution, it's it's pain. It's all the things, you know, that we've picked up along the way in life. I always say to people, nobody gets out of life unscathed. <laughs> we've all got stuff. So, um, but we also have a counsellor, you know, in Jesus, in the Holy Spirit. He's gone before us and he's experienced everything while he was down here on earth. So now he knows what we're going through. And I just think that it's a really wonderful thing that we can be aware of this, you know, in this time of being that already. Yeah. And that, you know, that his promises in the word are just so, um, so good to us. Like he is such a loving father. And I think thus concludes what I had to say to you today. Uh, it was short and sweet, but, you know, I tried to write more and God kind of went, I don't want you to say that. So. <laughs> So there you go.